Good morning, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Sound Bites with Bill Wood, a certified lay minister at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in El Paso, Texas, where our mission is to love God, follow Jesus, and serve others. And again, if you have any joys or prayer requests, please send them to the St. Paul's email address so that we may rejoice with you and pray with you. And if you would now, please join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you shower upon us every day. We thank you, too, for your mercy and your grace, which are new for us every day and that you supply abundantly for us. And Father, I ask that you would help us to share this mercy and this grace with all of those that we come in contact with as we go about doing your work in the communities where we live. Jesus name we pray amen last week we concluded our <clears throat> study by reading verses 1 through 6 of chapter 6 in Galatians and uh, today we will continue with in chapter 6 and we'll conclude our study on the Paul that wrote Paul the letter that Paul wrote to the churches in Galatia so if you would Open your Bibles to the 6th chapter of Galatians and read along with me as I read verses 11 through 15. And again, I will be reading from the Amplified Translation. Chapter 6, Galatians, beginning with verse 11. Mark carefully these closing words of mine. See with what large letters I am writing them with my own hand. Those who want to make a good impression and a fine show in the flesh would try to compel you to receive circumcision simply so that they may escape being persecuted for allegiance to the cross of Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. For even the circumcised Jews themselves do not really keep the law, but they won't to have you circumcised in order that they may glory in your flesh, your subjection to external rites. But far be it from me to glory in anything or in anyone except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah, through whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither is circumcision now or or of any importance or uncircumcision, but only a new creation, the result of a new birth and a new nature in Christ Jesus the Messiah. Paul begins by saying in verse 11, Mark carefully these closing words of mine. See what large letters I am writing them with my own hands. The scholar thinks that Paul may have simply taken the pen from the scribe who was writing the letter as Paul dictated and wrote the closing paragraph himself. And this may have been the way that Paul chose to emphasize the importance or to stress the importance of the summary of his thoughts in this letter. And today, we might choose to use bold type or to underline certain thoughts in, as, as our way of stressing them. Regardless, Paul wanted to repeat certain parts of his letter in hopes that they, they would not forget his message. Then continuing in verse 12 and 13, Paul says, Those who want to make a good impression and a fine show in the flesh would try to compel you to receive circumcision simply so that they may escape being persecuted for allegiance to the cross of Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. For even the circumcised Jews themselves do not really keep the law, but they want to have you circumcised in order that they may glory in your flesh, your subjection to external rites. Here Paul is, may be saying that the Judaizers are trying to work for this, their salvation, and they wanted the Galatians to do the same, but stresses that they themselves, that is the Judaizers themselves, do not keep the, all of the law. That will not work with God. 
Salvation does not come by works. It comes by grace only. We in our walk with God need to be mindful of an attitude that would stress our working for God as opposed to our having a right relationship with Him and placing an emphasis on the work that we are doing, that is, by being boastful about what we're doing and forgetting the real reason for what we're doing. Then in verse 14 and 15, Paul continues with, But far be it from me to glory in anything or anyone except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, through whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither is circumcision now of any importance nor uncircumcision, but only a new creation, the result of a new birth and a new nature in Christ Jesus the Messiah. I think Paul is saying that he will not boast in anything but the power of the cross to change lives. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision matters. What matters is a new creation, the result of a new birth and a new nature in Jesus Christ. And Paul expounds on this new creation and changed life in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21. So look that up and read it and study it sometime during this week. Then in verse 15, 11 through 15, Paul also emphasizes points that he has already made concerning Christ crucified on the cross and the relationship made possible because of that as opposed to trying to follow the law of Moses. That is, the followers of Jesus must develop a relationship with Jesus Christ based on the cross. You cannot do it based on circumcision. The closing verses are a closing prayer and benediction with emphasis on his commitment to the crucified Christ and the grace of God available to all who accept the risen Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. So reading verses 16 through 18. Peace and mercy be upon all who walk by this rule, who discipline themselves and regulate their lives by this principle, even upon the true Israel of God. From now on, let no person trouble me by making it necessary for me to vindicate my apostolic authority and the divine truth of my gospel. For I bear on my body the brand marks of the Lord Jesus, the wounds, the scars, and other outward evidence of personal persecution. These testify to his ownership of me. The grace, spiritual favor, blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, be with you, be with your spirit, brethren. Amen. So be it. Paul shares with them a brief bit of his own testimony stating that he bears the, on his body the marks of his devotion to Christ, having suffered persecution and physical harm from the Jews because he is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Then he gives this benediction. The grace, spiritual favor, blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, be with your spirit, brethren. Amen. So be it. Well, this concludes our study of the letter that Paul wrote to the Galatian churches. And if you have any suggestions for our next study, please let me know. Then I'll or if you have any questions or comments about any of the anything that we have talked about in the letter that Paul wrote to the Galatians, then please send that to the St. Paul's email address so that I might address that and share my thoughts with you, additional thoughts with you, share your thoughts with others, and also have an idea as to what you would like to study in the coming weeks. I have enjoyed our time together this morning, and I trust that you also have enjoyed it, and pray that you would go and have a blessed week. So, go in peace. 
Amen and amen.